We're starting this crazy Clara Biag on Twitch. This time we're gonna do a gold five Anna Vorgiviu Ursolento in game. For 12 until 451. I felt this attack as split it as it could have been. I couldn't follow up with no one while hiding from a Hanzo and a flanking soldier. One by one, every teammate dies. I would like to know what I could have done for a better outcome from 412 until 451. This was a particularly bad game, which I felt that the team was not at all synchronized. I'm a decent Mercy slash Kiri, so the first round was not a big deal for me. Based. Unbothered. Flourishing. Moisturized. The point is that I want to be better as a support in general and give the help my team needs. Every game since I've gone gold, if I'm not playing Brig or Zen, I feel like I'm just a heal bot. I'm starting to play more as... DPS to see if I get a little bit better with the killer eye. Let me just react to this. But I'm not sure if that's the way I should go. In your words, I want to be a pain in the ass as a support. Ah, yes. Perfect. Let's go. From 412 until 451. Chat, can you guess me on seven roses in the chat for Crazy Clara? Why are you in Bagus? Don't be in Bagus. What? Is it Z6? No, it's 9CI. 9CY. Three for your English, it's perfect. I don't know what you're talking about. Ready for 12 until 451. Let's go. Uh, you said you're Ursolento. The objective is I have you. Keep fighting. Until the end. Okay. Until here, until five minutes, right? Good positioning, bad aim. The other way around. You know what's happening? I'm going. I'm. Here's how it is. You're at a restaurant. You're with your friends, right? You're sitting there, and the waiter goes like, "What do you want to order? Pizza with ketchup. What do you want to order? Pizza with ketchup. What do you want to order? Pizza with ketchup. What do you want to order?" Uh, pizza with ketchup? Although you didn't want to do that in the first place. You're waiting for somebody to pick for you in order to not judge slash disturb their decision making. So over here, the you're a, this is like what I feel a bunch of support struggle with. You're waiting for somebody to pick something. You kind of know what you want to do, right? But you're waiting. Do we go right side? Do we go main? Do we go left side? Wherever you go, I'm here for you. Whatever you want to do so we can have a good time together, I'm here right next to you. Now, the thing is, it's a video game. You're probably going to play with a lot of strangers, not with friends nonstop. And unfortunately, they don't give a fuck about um, what you want. And I know how it is. So you have to be like, ah, oh, you don't give you don't give a fish about what I want? Okay, I'll give a fish about what you want. So I'm picking to do something, and then maybe we can work this. It's like you're in an intersection and you're waiting for somebody to you stay there and you stay. And you stay and you stay and you stay, and it's been two minutes, and nobody wants to let you pass. Eventually, you have to force it a little bit. Just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit until you have an opening. It's the exact same principle here. You're playing here, trying to support the Sigma that's gonna walk left, the Bastion that's walking right side, the Hans over here. You're not deciding. You have too many choices. And this is the case in which we're going to talk about space control, okay? You have to lock down an area. So, for example, the basic tip would be hug the right wall. The right wall helps you rotate everywhere. If you hug the left wall, the line of sight is pretty decent, but it's also very easy for the enemies to do stuff to you. So if you're playing from over here, you can get contested from the window. This is a bad sightline because you're going to get very easily locked by Hanzo and you're just going to get rushed down by Reinhardt. If you play main, you don't have proper sightline on the left side or right side, but if you go right side... 
We can maybe see your allies here, maybe see your allies on point, see the enemies there, there, maybe go for a flank right side, maybe over here. Streamer, too many things! Shut up already, please, you're confusing me. Pick something, find the wall, love the wall, become the wall. You walk into the team fight, you're staying here, and you're like, guys, where are we going? Uh, we're not going anywhere. Wall, I want the wall. Yes, you get locked by the Hans. Just try to go to the right side. Wait a little bit. Wait for him to ch charge his uh, shot again. Wait for the Sigma suck. Wait for the Sigma shield. Just go right side this wall. So you're safe from Hanzo. Because you're aware that Hanzo can kill you, right? You're not staying in the open. But look at, look at the movement. You seeing this? Oh, oh, oh. This is the guy that you're controlling. The objective is now you're ready to help your teammates. Now, if you would have played from the right side, let's observe the team fight from over here from the beginning. Okay, it's ever since you get in this position. Wow, we go even way back. So you walk here, look. I'm gonna follow me. I'm gonna follow where I, I think that you should have stayed. Sleep dark soldier, maybe shoot the soldier, doesn't matter, I'm in cover. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Soldier backs out, I see the lamb there, I see Bastion. Kill up the Bastion. Baptiste can take care of Hanzo and Sigma. Play from right side. The objective is now oh, he's being low. Maybe I can pocket him a little bit. Maybe I throw the nade. Who knows what might have happened here. Or maybe even peek here and do some damage. Another reason why we're doing this is because... Apart from obviously like choosing something eventually. Not letting, the other, uh, not letting other people choose for you. Is... Understanding the limits of supports and the roles in the fight. One of the easiest ways of understanding supports is the following. There are some supports that can keep the team alive. And if you play with two of these supports in the same team, then one of them has to look for something aggressive. Ana, Baptiste, Kiriko, Moira, and even Mercy to a certain extent. But I would say these four. If you have any combination of these two of these four in your team, then one of them has to look for something. So like, for example, you have Baptiste stacking up with your teammates, then you have to look for something. You can't both be healing. If you play Ana and Kiriko, one of you has to look for something. If you play Moega and Ana, one of you has to look for something. If your Baptiste is close to your teammates, then you can just let your teammates be there. You can just... We arrived at the club, five people, three went there, two went there. We're going to meet each other on our way out and go for the after party. Okay, you can do that. Same thing here. Okay, I'm gonna go and chill there with uh, Bastion. But we're gonna group up again eventually later. I'm going right there with Bastion, but we're gonna group up on the point. So, to summarize this entire team fight, pick a wall. Even if it's the wrong wall, just pick a wall. Because if you would have picked the left wall and get a little bit closer to the enemies to look for aggressive opportunities, you are, you are going to... Uh, feel suffocated with space. You're not gonna do it again, but just pick a wall. Don't stay there You can get close to your enemies. You don't always have to stay behind them, right? The positioning doesn't always have to be like this. This is where Ana is. This is where teammates are. One of the best Dude, this is actually perfect. One of the best ways to actually view team fights. It's like this, okay? Because you're not playing professionally. It, it, this is not Overwatch League. You can Just play your teammates are here. You can play from here. So if you want to rotate here and be aggressive or do damage to somebody from here or control the area here long range or play with your teammates, you're always ready to go back to your team. Or you can always find an opening. But if you play here, then if you want to get to this spot or this spot, depends on how well your team rotates from over here. So like, this is what you usually play, I feel like. But maybe try to play a little bit like in these aggressive areas. You know, green areas, orange areas, red areas. These are green areas, these would be like orange areas, and this would be red areas, because your team is behind you, right? This doesn't mean that you, it, it can't work, you can stay here, support your team, and see the enemies. But if you play from here, for example, as I was, the, the example would be exactly at that wall. Soldier was over here at the window, I'm playing from here. Yes, I can kind of see the enemies, I can kind of see them over there. Another key moment you said at 6.30 until 7.10. At this point, I had already embraced the defeat, but between being a happy frog, constantly jumping, and an awful shooter, I really tried to be a hard target and help my tank. Rewatching, I noticed so many aim mistakes, but I didn't know what else I could have done. I'm taking any advice, even another character that could have been better on this occasion. I chose Anna to be a pain, but I was the one feeling the pain. 
Well spoken. Wait, this is wait, this is my vote to give you. What the fuck? This is this is from Quick Play. Okay, my bad. In general, King of the Hill maps are very hard to play with Ana. Ready for battle. In general. Why would you embrace? Why would you embrace defeat here? Forty-nine to forty-two. It's even. It's not over. It's far from over. You have flux. You have window. They have no ultimate apart from life reaver's cosmetic ultimate, which doesn't do anything. You're good. Where? You? No. They can't cleanse your grenade. You have easy sleep dart. Easy sleep dart targets. You can sleep soldier. You can sleep Reinhardt. You can go for a sleep on Hanzo on life reaver. You're good. You're good. It, it's not over. It is not over. When you have like such huge ults. Wait, what did you say in this team fight? You said embrace defeat, jumping, aim mistakes. You don't know what you could have done better. Okay, let's see. This is literally the same thing that we talked about earlier. We are outnumbered. Take is it until the end? Until the end, yes. Okay, same thing that we have talked about earlier. Your allies are designing for you. He's a tank. You can pick right side. You can rotate over here and play from here. Let's watch the team fight if you rotate over here. Bomb, bomb. There's a shield there. Okay, he's full HP. I'm looking through the walls to see how much HP he has. I'm walking here. He's dead. Doesn't matter. I can even play from here. Kill him up. Oh no, I'm getting sucked. Oh, I have the mini here. He fades to me. Sigma's like to help me with his ultimate. I'm safe. Just play from here. This is not aim. This is not aim. This is pressure to the enemies. Which is done by positioning. Let's watch the second part of this. I'm under attack. Focus our attack on the objective. Unlucky here. Covering you. Okay, so. We're not going to go to the same explanation again, but as we, as I saw, as I showed you in Nepal, you playing from here is not that much pressure. Yes, the enemies can do that much to you, apart from maybe getting locked by Hanzo, but the enemies don't care about you. You're not putting pressure. If you get closer to them, you might stress them a little bit. So if you play from over here, for example, or even if you try and contest the left side, for that matter, if you go over here, for instance, you can just walk on these stairs, climb here, and go and fight the soldier and play from this window. Right? Rather than staying over here in the middle and waiting for for something to happen and then you punish. You're a player that this vote give you is bad. You say that it's bad because the enemies are not doing mistakes. You're an expert at punishing. You're not an expert at opening. You took the example of no, you're not allowed to do that to the extreme. You know what I mean? So you're waiting for Ganai to pin in. You're waiting for a soldier to do stuff. But what happens if... You, the enemy soldier to do a mistake. But what happens if your allies are the ones that are doing mistakes? What happens if you don't punish... ML7. You cannot punish your allies. You cannot punish your allies. You know, you're playing with them. Your allies are the ones that are getting locked by Hanzi. Your um, allies are the ones that are mispositioning, the ones that are not going together on one side, the one, the ones that are not having like the right approach in team fights and stuff. So in this case, you go into the second mode. I would say... That yes, if you wanna somebody that can punish your that can punish enemy mistakes very easily, but you also have to view Anna as an opener. As I would I would put Anna in the same category as Hanzo, as Widowmaker, as Roadhog, maybe to a certain extent extent as Kiriko, and to a Sombra that is would go for Widow unpocketed. What I'm trying to say is. It's pick potential. No, not Zen. Not Zen, no. Zen is more lucky. Like, Kiriko will flank and TP back. 
pick potential. You're waiting for an opening. You're waiting to win the. You're looking to win the team fight before the team fight starts. With Hanzo, it's exactly what happens. The enemy team is like this. If Hanzo, if I find the log with Hanzo, let's let's see how complicated Hanzo's gameplay is over here. Cause see, we won a couple of team fights just by this. Mm -hmm. A magnificent shot. That's it. Even is this is this hard gameplay? Can't you do this? You can do this. You know what I mean? This is an opening pick, I would say. Opening picks are amazing. And opening heroes that can open up team fights without using a bunch of abilities, a bunch of resources, and have like such high pick potential are super important. The higher up in the rating, the more valuable are, I would say. Because if you can win fights without using resources by getting picks, then you don't have to use your ultimates. You just won the fight. You have the numerical advantage. But in these ratings, you can even use your abilities in order to get picks. You're trying to win the fight before the fight starts. And now moving on to Ana with this whole example. So, wait, I'm getting distracted by, by Zenyatta. Zen flanks by tilting his screen sideways and charging orbs three miles for headshots. I thought that was a serious comment for a second and I was about to debate it. Never mind. Okay, I will not break focus anymore. I promise, Clara. Um, wait, an another parenthesis. So, Kiriko can TP back. Zen can TP back. Yes, you can get picks with Zenyatta. Right clicked from across the map. But let's be honest. I feel like it's more consistent to go for a flank kill with Kiriko than hopefully pray that you're going to get a right click with Zenyatta. You're right about his pick potential, though. It can happen. It can happen. It's not like Mercy pick potential or Baptiste pick potential if he doesn't have window. You know what I mean? Like, winning the fight before the fight starts. Zen can do that, but not as reliable. You can't do that with Brick, for instance. Or even with Mora, you can't... Stop it, stop with this. So, with Ana, you're really good at punishing mistakes. The problem is that the enemies are not doing mistakes. Your allies are. So in this case, you have to be the opener. You have to be the one that puts up a plate for your, for your allies to eat from. You know, you have to be like, an opportunity. I'm giving you an opportunity. So, this can be a sleep dart, this can be a nade. If games like these happen, then you have to look for an aggressive opportunity. You see me do this a lot throughout the years, because depends on how experienced you are with a hero, and how courageous you are, you know, like how cocky you are, I would say. For me, Ana is the hero that does that. Compared to other players that have Zenyaro, that have Kiriko, that, that do that. You know, like, look for something to happen as a direct consequence of you doing it. You got to then waiting for the enemies to make mistakes. So, in this case, I'm playing Ana. The enemies are not making mistakes. I'm thinking, who can I sleep dart? Who can I nade? Who can I kill? Let's go step by step. Doing something to Moira, what can we do? To, this is like when those uh, one-tip videos come in handy. When dueling a Moira, try to save your nade after she uses uh, Fade so that you can, she cannot cleanse it or sleep dart. Or an even better one. Here's an even better one from me. I cannot look for an aggressive nade onto the enemies. I can only, I think that I can only nade Moira. So I'm going to force the fade with my nade. And then if she goes for me, I still have the sleep dart. It can also be the other way around. So of course I'm going to, forehead streamer, I can shoot the Moira, but I don't trust my aim. Okay, fine. Throw the nade at her. Force the fade. One ability for one ability. That's still a small opening that you created. Rather than sitting there and waiting for somebody else to do something. Another one would be Soldier. Throw the nade at Soldier. He can't kill you from that range. So what if he puts his healing station? You don't... <clears throat> so when doing a Soldier, make sure to throw the nade when... To, what? No. What the... Wait for Soldier. Just throw the nade at Soldier. Yeet! Just throw it. You can also do it with Sleep Dart. It's just... I don't know. You walk over here. <clears throat> Give me a second. You walk over here. Okay. Uh, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum. I'm here. <clears throat> Yeet! Throw the sleep dart here. I don't know what the Hanzo. Walk over here. Okay, I have a shield. Oh, wait, look at the nade. Boom. Splash. That's it. Because if you do a certain action, you don't know the pos the consequences that it might result. But it's better than just... You don't know if the shot... You'll never know if you can make the shot if you never take it. Hashtag motivational. Hashtag sports reference. Hashtag dies of cringe. Even if you miss it, it doesn't matter. It's still better than not doing it. Right? Let's continue. Reinhardt. What can you do against Reinhardt? 
If I name the guy in high, do I get something out of it? No. Unless he goes with a Helmog and this is more of a punish thing, I can't do that much against him. If I sleep dart guy in high, guy in high can it work? Yeah, maybe sleep darting. Uh, maybe sleep darting uh, if he goes for a fire strike. Maybe that ca maybe that causes, I don't know, something to kick in from Life Weaver. And he goes like, I have to pull Reinhardt back to safety because he's sleeping. Oh my god! You did that with a sleep dart. If you don't have anyone else to like throw the sleep dart to. You can try with Hanzo. It's a little bit complicated long range. I want to recommend you going for a nade or a sleep dart on Hanzo because you're going to be dead. Most of the times, you're just going to be dead. With Life River, you can do this. You can throw the nade. You can throw the sleep dart. You can look for something. Look, 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 look. Just, just look, 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 look for something. And this has been the entire game. Okay, so let's let's watch one over here because we still have five minutes remaining. So in this case, the game starts, and this is because you said that you go went to Dana to try to do stuff to the enemies. I will not leave a broken world behind. Okay, we have this is what's going through my head. Baptiste, Sigma, Bastion. Baptiste, Sigma, Bastion will probably play together as a group because they're immobile heroes. Like they have some small mobility, but usually they're gonna stay together. While me and Hanzo can do whatever we want. I'm not going to try and pocket my Sig and Bastion because Baptiste is gonna stay close to them, positioning wise, right? As I said earlier, when you have two of those four heroes that I mentioned, one of them has to look for something. If my Baptiste decides to TikTok and go full DPS yet. mode, then I will play close to them. The world did not see it coming. So right now. Before the starts, because I'm in a safe spot, I'm thinking, uh, okay, if they go with dive, I'm saving my nade. 15 seconds, then we can see the team comp, I'm waiting, what is this? Same thing, you know, pressure, wall, 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 I want a wall. Oh no, I'm low. Okay, they have Hanzo, soldier left side. Okay, eat the sleep out of that soldier, even throw it randomly, just eat. Okay, looking for a nade, looking for a nade. The objective is okay, okay, okay. See what I mean? Like, the enemies were like, do they have an Ana? Do they have an Ana? How can I make it? I'm going to make uh, another paint, another graphic. I'm sorry about this, gonna get flashbanged. Because I've been hearing this for a very long time. Flashbang. This is the graphic. Okay? And in theory, let me think how I'm gonna do it. Hmm, okay. In theory, you have like some windows of opportunity, right? You have a window of opportunity here. You have a window of opportunity here. Window of opportunity here, let's say. Primo, what the hell are you doing? You'll see what I mean. So the probability of you and like when you can get the highest amount of value to, of, out of your abilities. For example, you're playing against Reinhardt, Tracer, Genji, right? And Genji dives. Well, this is this is bad. Genji dives, and that's when you want to use your nade slash sleep dart, Mr. Extreme. Like, that's when you want to do it. Genius. Genius. Oh my god. No way. Problem. Between this moment when Genji dashes and then he's out of the fight for, let's say, because of whatever is happening, for up until here. These are, let's say, for the exaggeration of the example, 40 seconds. In these 40 seconds, you do not need your nade or sleep dive for optimal usage. And this is exactly what you're doing. These are seconds in which you can do whatever you want with the nade. You can look at the nade. You can ask the hobbies of your nade. You can uh, go on a movie together. You can do whatever you want with the nade. You can do whatever you want with the sleep dart. If you want to sleep dart the wall, go for it. You don't need it. You need it in 40 seconds. Now, as a more realistical example, the cooldowns would be probably, let's say, 21 to 22 seconds in which you would probably need these abilities. And this will come with experience. But to show you in-game exactly what's happening, from over here. Who do I need the nade for? Who do I need my sleep dart for? Is anybody gonna dive me? Like, maybe I need the sleep dart for a soldier at the beginning. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Soldier gets away. He's over there. What am I saving it for? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm gonna have fun soon. I'm wait I'm, 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 I have five million dollars and stuff and I'm I'm a hundred and fifty years old. I'm gonna have fun soon. Give me a second. Wait until I get a hundred more and then I'm going to 
the opportunity sometimes never presents itself, and it's not because the enemies, maybe the enemies don't want to give you the opportunity. This is an opportunity. Hands over extending here is an opportunity. But we all know that in life, sometimes you have to force opportunities and make out of shit a diamond. No, you don't have to do that. But sometimes you have to be the one that's trying something. You know, have to be the one that's trying something. If you would play with a team, I just want to say this though, Crazy Clara. If you play with a team, I love your play style. This is exactly what I would want from, uh, from somebody that plays together in a team, right? Okay, we're waiting. I use resources for you. We go together. We play the game. But you're trying to climb, right? You're trying to climb. You're trying to learn. You're in gold. You have to be a pain in the ass, as you were saying, and your vote give you a submission. You have to look for something. Look for something. It can be looking at the enemy. You look in here and pinging, you're doing something. We're playing safe. Let's continue watching for a little bit. Nade, sleep dart. Hans on the right side. Nade, sleep dart. Nade, Nade. You did something. Waiting a little bit. He's backing out. I want to press W. Wait a bit. Nade, sleep dart. 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 Nate, sleep dart. Nate, sleep dart. Okay, I know exactly what to do. Why did I stuck the funk playlist? I know exactly what you need. Exactly what you need. Give me a second. This will be one of the most random things that you've ever heard ever. One of the most random things that you've ever heard ever. But what to work on to improve fast? Okay, I'm going to keep everything over here. Literally going to keep... I mean, nah, nah, you know what? It did data. No, I, I think your aim is okay-ish. Overall, I think your cooldown decision made position... Yeah, they, they just pull like this. Yeah, it's just probably... No, you know what? We're going to delete the graph. We're deleting this. Because I have for you a very... I don't... Re Olaf doesn't recommend you this. I recommend you this. This is a very special assignment. Number one, throw your grenades and sleep darts, no, 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 not even this, throw 20 nades per game and 15 and 10 sleep darts per game, even if they're bad, even if they're good, you can save them for certain abilities and ultimates, okay? Like, I'm not trying to tell you, but you see, Mystic Streamer Vord reviewed me and he told me to use my sleep dog there and that's why I didn't have it. No, what I'm trying to say is look for more aggressive opportunities to learn how impactful they are or how much they lack impact, you know? It comes to you as a player, it depends on how you want to take the duels. Because, for example, if you're playing against the Hanzo in gold, you might want to go and try to sleep dart him. He might miss. But if you're playing against the Hanzo in masters, it might not work. Trial and error. You're trying to play perfectly in gold. Newsflash, you're in gold. You don't have to play perfectly. You have to have fun. You have to experiment. You have to do... It's, it's like this with learning. You can do... You can add a little bit, a little bit, a little bit to your playstyle to play better, or you can do a bunch of mistakes very fast, and you're going to learn way faster than adding just a little bit, you know? Just a little bit. So throw 20 nades per game and 10 sleep dice per game. I'm not joking. Count them. Literally count them. Okay? It can, if you go like, but Mystic Streamer, how do I throw 20 nades per game? I didn't see aggressive nades or, or passive nades. You can throw the nade on your feet, for, for instance, or on somebody, on let's say your Reinhardt, that's full HP, because he can get benefit, he will get benefit from extra healing, because that's one of the effects of it. Oh, Mystic Streamer, I want to throw another nade. Fine, I play from... This spot, and I throw a nade in the sky, it's gonna land in six seconds, and I'm gonna use it to, to, I don't know, for something. You can still, like, find value out of it, you know? You have to do trial and error. Number two, I recommend you do this. Find a wall and play from areas that... Areas, what the fuck? Areas that let you rotate. So, we covered this a little bit. Um, with the example, I'm just going to put it, uh, bomb, 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 
let's just put x y i don't know w and u arg u and u arg u2 and u arg u2 okay so um over here if you find the wall this is your positioning this is your why are your allies these are the enemies and this is you if you play from here then the enemies can you rotate depending on how y rotates you know like if they walk left side you walk left side if they walk right side you walk right side if you play from this area as we're talking about like with the wall we find the wall and find the guys that let you rotate then you can go it's easier for you to go right side it's easier for you to go left side you're also closer to the enemy so your abilities are going to be easier to land and it's going to be easier to land and in this case, this is already like very flank-like. You can do this if you have really good mechanics. So like be behind enemy lines. The example would be, remember in the first team fight that you showed me where Bastion died? Go even deeper than your Bastion went and go behind them. If you trust your nades and sleep dice, just go for it. So literally, your playstyle has to be random. You have to, you have to play with no consequence if that makes sense. Mute allies, mute chat, and just play. Music on, no pressure. If you play with a team, again, as I was saying, you're playing well. But you have to experiment. You're waiting to punish. You're not looking for stuff. You're good at punishing enemies. But if they're not doing mistakes, then you have nothing to punish. You have nothing to punish. So you have to force something. You have to look for something. And this is a case in which you do that. Number four, I would say tell, uh, what the hell? Okay. Tell yourself to look for something three times a game. This can be look for a sleep dart, look for a nade, look for a pick. Just, just do this. Look for something. Look for a better position. And again, just find the wall and hug the wall. And number five, the final one, understand your role as a support in the team comp that you are playing if you're playing with two supports that have the possibility of keeping the team alive by themselves then you can just look for something else right playing baptiste and nana baptiste stays with the team the nana should look for flank nades flank sleep darts try something if let's say baptiste goes for damage then you focus on healing if kiriko goes for flanks then you focus on healing and the other way around because this is otherwise what you're going to do is you're just going to eat resources up if both of you are focusing on healing and you're gonna have like two heroes that are going to play very passive when you could have four heroes that play aggressive and just one passive i hope you found this useful i'm just telling you this is mostly a change in mentality it's not necessarily about correcting some mistakes and stuff it's about a change in mentality you're waiting for stuff to happen you just have to throw your abilities see what happens if you do them and then learn it's a game have fun don't feel pressure when playing the game. You can do this in quick play. You can do this with friends. Don't feel that bad. Don't feel bad because you're not playing perfectly in gold. If you found the vote give you useful, make sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments how you found it, Crazy Clara. And if you want to watch more, check out my uh, socials and YouTube channels. Till next time, I'm going to 7 out.